Uh, my name is Pastor Hal York, and welcome to Truth in the Trenches. Today we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 10, where we read these words. The righteous man has regard for the life of his animal, but even the compassion of the wicked is cruel. Another translation says, whoever is righteous has regard for the life of his beast, but the mercy of the wicked is cruel. The righteous man has regard for, for knows the value of his animal. And this verse, is this verse promoting animal rights or prevention of cruelty to animals? Well, not really. It is telling us that the righteous man is considerate, and that consideration extends even to his animals. Exodus 23, 12 says, Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your donkey may have rest, and the son of your servant and the alien may be refreshed. The righteous man is considerate. He's thoughtful. He's kind. He understands others. Their lives do not revolve around themselves. They understand how things work. They understand the relationship between different things. They know people need rest. They know animals do as well. They know the importance of taking care of those who work for you, those around you, those you care about. The righteous are this way for several reasons, but mainly because they are a child of God. God is like this. He sees and he feeds the birds of the air. A sparrow does not fall without him seeing it. The Spirit of God lives in them. And these are the fruits of a Spirit-filled life. And this first part of this verse shows us and reminds us that the Hebrew word know has a very warm personal side to it. It regards things to know, to le- learn to know. It means to perceive or to, to perceive and see, to find out and discern, to discriminate and distinguish. This describes the character of the righteous person. They know and they care and they want to learn. They know the difference between things and how to make distinctions. In our day, we might not grasp the significance of an animal, but in those days, animals were your means of transportation, working in the crops. And so regarding the life of your animal as something important was a responsible, thoughtful, and necessary thing to do. They needed to be well looked after. And so it's not surprising that we see that the righteous man regards has regard for the life of his animal. But it doesn't stop there. The righteous person understands the difference between his animals and his family and his wife. And if he, re- if he regarded or was thoughtful about how he treated his livestock, how much more so would he have be mindful and thoughtful about how he treated the, his spouse or his family or his children? A righteous person thinks of others first. They do not take advantage of people or misuse them or their animals. And we see that all the way through the book of Proverbs. But when I read this verse, the question I asked myself was this. How can compassion or mercy be cruel? Well, it doesn't say compassion is cruel. It says that the compassion of the wicked is cruel, which shows us that not all compassion is equal. You have to consider the source. But what does this mean? Well, mercy is defined means compassion or deep affection. And these things in the heart of a wicked person are tools they use to get things from people, not help people. Wicked people are self-centered and the exact opposite of the righteous person we just saw in the first part of the verse. They have no true compassion, no true kindness or warmness towards others. And when it appears that they do, their kindness is often cruelty in disguise. Flattery is a form of this, the kind-sounding words, but their heart is not with you. Proverbs 26, 24 to 26 says this, Whoever hates disguises himself with his lips and harbors deceit in his heart. When he speaks graciously, believe him not. There are seven abominations in his heart. Though his hatred be covered with deception, his wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. The compassion of the wicked is cruel. It's not just insincere. It's worse than that. It's used to inflict hurt and to harm on others. But this verse also reminds us that we need to examine our hearts regularly so as to be careful that there is no vice hidden in our virtue. Hatred covered with deception, mercy, kindness, kind words can be an effective camouflage for evil or hatred. The righteous is considered of the least to the greatest, the poor or the rich, the servant to the king, right down to his own animals. But it's an outward focused, not inward. Think of the good Samaritan. Mercy, nothing in it for himself except the neighbor in need. He cared enough to show mercy, show love and compassion, and there were no strings attached. Yes, we need to be merciful people. We need to show mercy. 
but the motivation for it is as important as anything else. Why am I being kind? Why am I showing compassion? Why am I showing mercy? Is it just because of who I am, a child of God, and I see a brother or sister in need and I want to help them, or maybe anybody in need and I want to help them? David said, search me and know my heart and see if there be any wicked way in me. And that's what we need to do whenever we're showing mercy and compassion. Yes, we should do it because of who we are in Christ, but we should also make sure that our motives are pure because it's very easy for vice to, to wiggle its way into our virtue, and we need to keep a pure in a heart before God and before others. So may this truth guide us and guard us in the trenches of life as we seek to live our lives for the glory of God and the good of others. May God bless.